seeing your baby moving, your baby kicking, and you're a first-time mother is a, such a surreal experience. It's fantastic. And every mother looks forward to have this feeling during their pregnancy. Actually, it's such a feeling that some women don't know how to differentiate it, especially the first time Welcome mothers. to the Nursing Moms. It's me, Nurse Janet, and in this video here today, I'm going to talk about the fetal kids. When do we start feeling the fetal movement? When you should be worried? How frequent can your baby move? Yeah, some mothers come that my baby hasn't moved for a while. Now I'm going to tell you when you should be worried. I'm also going to tell you about fetal kick count. You can as well track your fetal movement. And I'm going to tell you why do babies move or kick. Watch to the end. Welcome to the Nursing Moms. If you like our videos, hit the like button and subscribe. Stay updated for more coming videos by hitting the notification bell. When do babies start their movements in the uterus? Actually, in the early stages of pregnancy, the baby moves too much frequent or the movements are so, so strong, but they can never be felt or recognized and appreciated. For a first-time mother, feeling the baby movements can take time, like, from week 20 onwards but for a subsequent pregnancy feeling your baby movement can be as early as week 12. the early movements are felt in the lower abdomen and they feel like something like a gas a flutter bubbles actually until the movements are a bit stronger or have matured enough is when you can feel it's a fetal kick but in early stages you feel like it's just a gas or something just passed down there in the lower abdomen most of the time mothers come like corners my baby hasn't moved for a while yeah it's a worry and before it worries you let's go and do fetal kick count fetal kick count starts from week 26 onwards and it's typically counting your fetal kicks each and every fetal kick in two hours and knowing like how you want to know how regular they are. It's important to know because tracking this fetal kick count will help you know whether your baby is okay, active, sleeping, anything that is wrong with your baby. And you'll also know when you are supposed to report to your doctor that you've not had your fetal moving. And before we start the fetal kick count, we have to know that babies do things in a pattern. There are some babies that can sleep the whole day, but again, if, it feel, it, if the mother is sleeping during the night, then it, that is when he or she will be punching, moving, everything, every sort of activity that she will be doing. But again, there's this type of baby that can be very, very active during the day and sleep together with the mother during the night. So you have to know where your baby is. Is she a night sleeper? Is she a, a during day sleeper? Before you start a kick count, let's use the time that your baby kicks so regularly. Use the time that your baby kicks most of the time that the baby is very active. You have to identify that time if it's night or if it's during the day. This is the time that you'll be doing fetal, cou fetal count every single day fetal kick count is very important because through fetal kick count especially to the high risk pregnancies high risk pregnancy is any pregnancy with a complication and that requires close monitoring it can be hypertension in pregnancy diabetic in pregnancy any other condition that requires close monitoring during pregnancy so the the reason for doing a fetal kick count is that it can help in early stages first to know that there is a fetal hypoxia that is cut down oxygen cut supply to the baby you'll realize if the baby has fetal hypoxia there'll be less or reduced fetal movement because actually he or she is not receiving the oxygen another good reason for doing fetal kick count is that it will also help to know when there is growth retardation in the uterus any abnormality that doesn't allow the baby to grow well. Actually, it's only a healthy baby that maybe will be kicking so, so well. But if again the baby has some growth problems, through fetal kick count, you'll realize that this baby is not doing well. Another good reason for doing fetal kick count is that it will help in knowing intrauterine fetal death in early stages. Actually, 
you, you cut off oxygen supply or anything that can lead to you know, fetal death will be detected through fetal K count. So begin the count. Get yourself time fast. You have to set the time. We're going to do two hour count. Two hours. Yeah. You have to set the two hours first. Get something to drink. It can be a cold or a warm drink. You can get yourself a cup of a hot, warm milk. As long as it has some glucose in it, we need energy to re-energize the baby. That is, you're doing this fetal kick. Suppose you are doubting if your baby is moving. And before you just go to the hospital, you have to do this before you go to the hospital. So after getting something to drink, get your pregnancy pillows or get into a comfortable sleeping position, preferably the left side. That is the most favorable sleeping position during pregnancy. Lie on your left and have a chat. Every single kick, you have to chat it down. Again, in this, you have to know the difference between kicks and hiccups. Babies do have hiccups too in the womb. And again, hiccups are a bit rhythmic. You know how hiccups are like they'll be going, oh, oh, oh. yeah, just the way hiccups are. Don't chat a hiccup. We need a move, we need a stretch, we need a roll, we need a punch, whatever it is. However your baby is moving, that is what we need to record. So you don't have to chat a hiccup to record. In these two hours, you have to do it like every single one, you're not down. Every single one, you're not down. What should you inform your doctor about the fetal movements being a concern? Fetal movement is a sign of a healthy baby. So if the fetal movement is not like enough or they're low or you have to inform your healthcare provider. If you're experiencing less than 10 movements in two hours, especially during the time you consider your baby to be very active, then it can be a sign of something that requires a medical attention and you just need to inform your healthcare provider for any assistance that might come. Again, the high-risk pregnancies, any slight deterioration in your fetal movements, like, as I said earlier, fetal movements becomes more regular in advanced pregnancy, like, that is in the late stages of pregnancy. And in early pregnancy, the fetal movements are a bit irregular. They can move anytime, but in advanced pregnancy, you realize that your baby will be moving almost the same time of the day. You can as well do fetal kick count after every meal, like after breakfast, after lunch, and after supper. After breakfast, you just lie down somewhere or have yourself, or if you, even if you are at a, at a working place, you can just sit comfortably somewhere and mark or count your fetal movements. Every hour, we expect at least five movements after, within the first one hour after meal. Again, after lunch, you do the same. Again, after supper, you do the same. If you experience less than three movements after meals, less than three movements within the first one hour, then you have to inform your healthcare provider. In the last two trimesters, the baby's movements are always very, very active or prominent. And you can even see them, especially in the third trimester, you can even see it outwardly. You can see this is a hand, this is a leg, while kicking or even punching. But again, as you near your delivery day, there is a reduced space. And again, the baby is already in the cephalic position, the longitudinal and cephalic, the head is sinking downwards. So that you'll realize that your baby will not be moving more actively the way it used to be. But again, you have to be very keen for just a kick or whatever it is, like a punch, the baby will be trying to stretch, but not moving much active, like rotating and moving all over the way it used to be in the previous trimesters. This is just due to a reduced space. Your baby has so, so grown. And so there is very little space for all of this movement. If you are not in a high risk pregnancy category, doing a fetal kick count is just a plus on your side. Actually, it's not that, like it's a requirement, but it's good to know and to monitor the movement of your fetus. Yeah, the movement of your baby inside your womb. 
you just have to know it like you can do it once in a day especially that time that you know your baby is always active but for a high risk pregnancy you have to do it like after breakfast after lunch and after supper every one hour after all of these meals you have to try and monitor get at least five fetal counts after every each an hour of these meals if it's anything to do with less than three please inform your doctor they can do an ultrasound they can do whichever the test just to be sure that you're